Hi, fourth grade, Mrs. Snyder here. I miss seeing all of you, and I thought I would try a lesson where we actually got to see each other for a little bit. This week, we are going to continue working on narrative poetry. Uh, this is part two of our lesson. We did part one last week, so if you haven't had a chance to do that lesson yet, now is the time to go back and complete part one of narrative poetry before completing this lesson. Let's start with a review of narrative poetry. Last week we learned that there are three components we look for to decide if a poem classifies as narrative poetry. The first thing we talked about is if the poem tells a story. Narrative poems always tell a story. They can be fiction or nonfiction. The second thing we look for in determining if a poem is classified as narrative poetry is looking to see if it has story elements. So narrative poems that have the same components as a regular story, such as character, setting, problem, and solution, um, is considered a narrative poem. It would have a beginning, a middle, and an end, just like a regular story would. Now, let's look at the last component. Let me move this so we can see a little bit better here. There we go. The last component we look for on uh, deciding if a poem is narrative poetry is that we look to see what literary elements it has. To make it a poem and not just a story, narrative poems use literary elements such as rhyme, rhythm, and stanzas. So we're going to practice with each one of those elements today. And the first thing we're going to practice with is the component, does it tell a story? So we're going to use the poem, The Waves by Gertrude M. Jones. And as we read, I want you to ask yourself the following questions. Does it tell a story? Is it fiction or nonfiction? The Waves by Gertrude M. Jones. The little waves ran up the sand, all rippling bright and gay. But they were little robbers, for they stole the sand away. And when they tossed it all about, they piled it in the bay. One day there came a clever man. He walked along the shore. And when he saw the crested waves creep higher than before, said he, I'll build a harbor wall, and you'll come here no more. So then he started working. Stone after stone he brought. The little, the little waves beat at the wall. By day and night they fought. Their white hair streaming in the wind. Their manner quite distraught. But when the wall was finished, like others of their ilk, they tiptoed round the harbor as sleek and smooth as silk and purred around the fishing boats like kittens lapping milk. Now let's think about those two questions I asked you to think about as we read. Does the poem tell a story? And is it fiction or nonfiction? So yes, the poem tells a story about a man at the beach. We know the story in the poem is fiction. It's a made up story. Now let's look back at the poem to see text evidence. Sorry, I have to keep moving myself here. The parts that I have highlighted support the answers to our question, does it tell a story? Is it fiction or nonfiction? So we have little waves running up the sand. There came a clever man, he walked along the shore. So we know there's a man at the beach. He talks about building a harbor wall. He worked on the wall, he used stones and he was able to complete the wall. We know it's a story about a man at the beach who's building a wall based on that text evidence. There's no proof that this man existed, so we know it's fiction, okay? One component of narrative poetry is the poem tells a story. This poem tells a fictional story about a man who builds a wall to stop the waves. Let's look at the next component of narrative poetry. Let's look at story elements. We're going to use the same poem. 
We're going to reread The Waves by Gertrude M. Jones. And as we read, I want you to think about a different question this time. I want you to think about, does it have the following story elements? Is there a character or characters? Is there a setting? And is there a problem and a solution? Let's reread. The Waves by Gertrude M. Jones. The little waves ran up the sand, all rippling bright and gay. But they were little robbers, for they stole the sand away. And when they tossed it all about, they piled it in the bay. One day there came a clever man. He walked along the shore. And when he saw the crested waves creep higher than before, said he, I'll build a harbor wall and you'll come here no more. So then he started working, stone after stone he brought. The little waves beat at the wall, by day and night they fought. Their white hair streaming in the wind, their manner quite distraught. But when the wall was finished, like others of their ilk, they tiptoed round the harbor, as sleek and smooth as silk, and purred around the fishing boats, like kittens lapping milk. So let's think about the question that I asked you to think about. Does the poem have a character or characters, a setting, a problem, and a solution? It does. The poem is about a man, that's our character, who visits the beach, that's our setting. He notices the waves are hitting the shore too hard and the sand is being washed away, that's the problem. He builds a wall, to stop the waves from washing the sand away. That's our solution. Now let's look at that in our poem to see the text evidence. Now I've color coded it here for you so that we can see the three different story elements, character, setting, problem, and solution. So right here in yellow, it talks about a clever man. That's our character. The words waves, sand, and walked along the shore show us it's taking place at the beach, that's our setting, and the blue highlights the problem and solution. They stole the sand away, is talking about the waves, that's a problem. When the man saw these waves get higher and higher, he talked about building a wall, that's part of a solution to the problem, and when the wall was finished, it says they, meaning the waves, tiptoed round the harbor meaning they weren't as hard and heavy as they were before. So we've got our character, we've got our setting, and we've got our problem and solution. Now let's head back and remind ourselves that story elements is the second component of a poem being considered narrative poetry. Now let's take a look at the third element that makes a poem narrative poetry, and that's literary elements. Yes, we're going to use the same poem. We are going to reread for the final time, The Waves by Gertrude M. Jones. This time, I want you to think about this question. Does it have any of the following literary elements? Please look for rhyme, rhythm, and stanzas. The Waves by Gertrude M. Jones. The little waves ran up the sand, all rippling bright and gay. But they were little robbers, for they stole the sand away. And when they tossed it all about, they piled it in the bay. One day there came a clever man. He walked along the shore. And when he saw the crested waves creep higher than before, said he, I'll build a harbor wall and you'll come here no more. So then he started working, stone after stone he brought. The little waves beat at the wall, by day and night they fought. Their white hair streaming in the wind, their manner quite distraught. But when the wall was finished, like others of their ilk, they tiptoed round the harbor, as sleek and smooth as silk, and purred around the fishing boats like kittens lapping milk. Okay, think about that question I asked you. Does the poem have literary elements? Rhyme? Rhythm stanzas. Yes, the poem is written in stanzas, not paragraphs. There are four stanzas in the poem. 
every other line in each stanza rhymes. And when you read the poem, as you heard me read three times, it's easy to fall into a nice rhythm as you read. Let's look at that text evidence that helped me get that answer. So let's start with rhyme. Right here, lines two, four, and six rhyme. Right here, lines eight, 10, and 12 rhyme with a different set of rhyming words. Lines 14, 16, and 18 rhyme. And lines 20, 22, and 24 rhyme. When you have that much rhyme, that really helps put it into a rhythm when you read. We also talked about there being stanzas. There are four stanzas. I labeled them for you. This right here is stanza number one. This right here is stanza number two. This right here is stanza number three. And this right here is stanza number four. The fact that it is written in stanzas instead of paragraphs is a strong component of it being a poem and not a story. The um, rhyme that is included that leads to it being read with a nice rhythm there are strong literary elements to make it narrative poetry. So the literary elements is our third piece to the puzzle. The poem used rhyme and rhythm and is written in stanzas instead of paragraphs. Now, let's test your memory. Can you remember the three things we look for to determine if a text is a narrative poem? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. Try to come up with all three. All right. Did you cut did you come up with remembering that a narrative poem tells a story? Narrative poems always tell a story, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Did you remember that narrative poems have story elements? Just like a regular story, a narrative poem has characters, setting, problem, and solution, and there's always a beginning, middle, and end. It tells a full story. But what sets a story apart from a narrative poem? What makes it actually a poem and not just a story? That would be the literary elements. That would be um, uh, literary elements such as rhyme, rhythm, and stanzas, like the poem had today that we shared. All right, you guys did a great job. This was a very excellent lesson, and I enjoyed actually being part of your lesson this time. Um, I feel like I'm actually teaching you a little bit more like it's kind of normal school. So um, I hope you enjoyed it too. What you need to do to practice is you need to go to the, do the Google Docs activity that's attached to this lesson in Google Classroom. And please don't forget to turn in your work once you are finished. I will check it and I will return it to you um, to share some feedback with you on how you did. All right, kids, have a fantastic week and I look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.